Today, we're going to set up our AI Assistant in Live Canvas version 4. Let's go. First, here I am in the back end of a local WordPress installation. I'm in the Live Canvas settings under AI integration. And you can see I've already put in some website information that gives the context of what this client site is. But to use the AI, I'm going to need an OpenAI API key. If I open this link, uh, actually, I'm going to open it in an incognito window. It takes me to platform.openai.com slash API keys. You can also get here on the OpenAI website under the products menu with API login. This is also in the footer. Now that takes us to this area here of some documentation. But today we're going to go into settings over here and we're going to scroll down to API keys. Now, I already have a few here, but I'm just going to create a new secret key, give it a name, select a project for it, and create secret key. Now, I'm going to copy that. Before we put that into WordPress, I'm going to highlight a couple other things here. We do have a spot here under billing for payment information. You're going to have to add some money here to use the service. Now, you can see in my overview, I have about $20 of credits. You can set it to auto refill. You can set a budget per project and stuff like that. One thing I want to highlight is that when I compare this to somebody else's note, this does not reflect the status of your chat GPT account because that is a different service than the API. However, I did sign up for mine originally through chat GPT. So that sort of thing may be different for you. You might also want to take a look at the limits and budgets that you can set under usage. You can find your monthly spend, your project spend, things like this. And I wanted to highlight how small the cost can be. So we're seeing that yesterday I accrued a total of about one under one cent. The pricing stuff is always fascinating to me. Uh, to use their 4.0 model, it's $2.50 for a million input tokens. The Live Canvas team actually recommends using 4.0 Mini, and you can see it's 15 cents for a million. And like the 4.0 Mini does a great job with writing and code and stuff like that and it's orders of magnitude less cost. So be sure to check this stuff out. These things are evolving very quickly. We're at the frontiers of this technology. Going back to WordPress, I have my API key. I'm gonna paste that in. I'm gonna hit save. Now we should be ready to go. Let's do a test. I'm going to go to pages. I have a page all set up here. So I'm gonna hit edit with live canvas. I'm gonna start from scratch here. I'm gonna add a section. Let's just use, let's do a hero section. Okay, we've got that. And now um, I want to show you, if I just go click on this section icon, go to AI Assistant, I'm just going to hit Go Ask AI. And without even asking for anything else, it's going to rewrite this hero section for me. There we go. That was about 30 seconds, I think. And it has rewritten this hero section. It's giving me a little blurb. Now I'm going to click on this block, use AI Assistant. I'm just going to ask it to use more words in this section. And that sh shifted the layout. I'm actually going to just undo that one. So as you can see, we've connected the OpenAI integration with our Live Canvas version 4, and we're ready to go. Let's go a little more in-depth as we look at how this AI Assistant works. We can trigger the AI Assistant on various blocks of content within the Live Canvas editor. So if I hover over this block, I've got this context menu. Here it is within the column. If I go over here in green, here it is under the row. Uh, it's on this container that's constraining the content width. It's on this whole section. We can also find it in the tree view here. I'm just going to collapse the hero section as we scroll down and just look at the whole tree for this section here. And you can even get as fine grained as selecting it on this link tag. I'm going to right click on that. There's AI Assistant again. I just edited this section to have two paragraphs in the one block. If I wanted to edit the second paragraph, that's where this universal selection tool becomes very valuable. Now I can hover each element within the block and it has its own AI assistant toggle. So you'll be able to select it on anything you need. Now let's take a tour of this properties panel for the AI assistant. So here's the title. There's this code editor. If you click that, it opens the HTML view of whatever element you are inspecting. That's not directly related to AI. It's just on all of the live canvas panels. Next, we have these two tabs. There's AI prompts and there's screenshot to code. We're going to go through all of this. So first, we see the various models that we can use from OpenAI. The Live Canvas team recommends that we use 4.0 Mini. 
It's the most cost efficient and it is very effective at writing code and copy. Below that are the ready-made prompts. It's the stuff GPT is famous for. So some of my most used ones are like use more words, fewer words. There's stuff like changing the tone to be more professional. Then there's of course the translation tools and below that there's creation prompts like create a short sentence about the company, generate a product description. When you click one, it actually just fills the prompt and you could just change it as you need. Below the prompts, we have two check boxes. First is to include the context of the website information. Just as a reminder, that's set here under the live canvas settings. The website information is essentially the purpose the website exists for. It's the overall information about the business or company. It'll include things like your services, hours, frequently asked questions, desired tone, etc. For most brochure sites, you're going to leave that on. You can also include the context of the entire page. So if you had like a news article, you would want, you know, a paragraph to be aware of the rest of the site. But if you were just adding a block on a news website, and it's about a story, you wouldn't want it to necessarily be aware of all of the other stories that are unrelated. So these are just really handy context tools that give the AI the information it needs to write the most effective text. After the prompt, we have the button that generates the text, and below that we have an undo. And of course, we do have undo and redo over here as well. I'm gonna create a new section to demonstrate screenshot to code. So I'm just gonna add a grid here Okay, and now let's use the AI assistant within that. And I'm gonna grab a screenshot that I've got prepared. We're going to be building this, it's a pricing table. So after I've chosen the file, the default model is 4.0. I'm just gonna leave it like that and convert to code. And within a few seconds, it brings a smile to my face. This is such a solid starting point, so I'm just gonna use the properties panel here. I can't resist adding a little background color to this. And now I'm also just going to go in and tweak the HTML to my heart's desire. Off and running. This is the way to do it. I love that it also includes the live canvas tags to make all the text editable. This is truly game changing stuff. Now let's have our AI assistant help us populate some content. I'm going to add a new section. This time I'm going to click this little sprocket guy, go back to the Ninja Bootstrap. I have activated that for this website. So I'm gonna use this feature, I'm gonna use simple. Okay, now I'm gonna ask the AI assistant to populate this section with our company services. So I hit ask AI. As a reminder, our website has four services, gardens, floral, displays, and maintenance. And it has written those four sections. It has left two of them. Uh, sometimes the AI removes that. And sometimes if I just say, information about our company and its services, it'll write different things in here. So I'm just gonna remove these because Live Canvas makes it so easy to do so. And now I'm just gonna edit the row in the HTML editor. That's my favorite way to do it. I'm gonna have two columns for large. Actually, I don't even need that at all since I'm doing that on small. Boom. Okay, next I'm gonna add a section for some statistics and still using Ninja Bootstrap. Let's grab this guy here. Now let's ask the AI to replace the text with our company statistics. After a quick read and double checking the statistics in the website information, I see we have exactly what we wanted. I just wanna share an important observation. If you ask GPT to do a task more than once, you'll find that the result is slightly different. This is true of copywriting and of the screenshot to code features. So if you're trying to create yourself a starting point, I like to experiment a bit ask for it a couple times, especially on something complex. I like to keep all the versions, compare them, mix and match. This assistant will give us lots to work with. We just need to have an attitude of experimentation and awareness. So I do end up using it multiple times for complex objects. Next, I want to enhance this with a little bit of polish. Let's add some animation to this section here. I'm going to go back to our settings under home, and I'm going to turn on animations using the animate on scroll library. So I've checked that box, I'll hit save. And if you're not familiar with it, I'm gonna open in a new tab here. This is the animate on scroll library. It's a lightweight JavaScript tool that will fade in objects with the data AOS attribute. It takes a few different arguments. Um, so often before AI, I would just come here, copy the one I want, find the object, paste in this attribute into the HTML view but now we can ask GPT to do this for us. I'm asking for these columns to animate in with AOS, staggering the right column to come in a little later. It seems to have done that. Let's take a look on the front end. 
Now the moment of truth as we scroll in, they fade in. There was a little stagger. I'll do that again. Perfect. Let's check on mobile. I'm just going to use the inspector. I'm going to turn on this device toolbar. I'm going to simulate. I just like it on responsive and I can resize it. And try that again. Those work nice. So it works great on mobile and desktop. I see that it did rewrite the descriptions under the titles here. So this had been like web development screenshot that we did. Um, but now we have garden and floral. So it's replaced the placeholder content. Uh, and I love that. Let's look at the HTML for the row. Now on this column, we see the data AOS fade up. And on this one, we have a delay of 200 milliseconds. We're getting pretty comfortable with our new AI assistant. We know how to bring it up. We know how to use it to make changes. But now let's take things to the next level. Next, we're gonna make some stuff from scratch. Okay, I've just added in this new section. And usually I'll click on this dummy section thing and I'll create a container and choose the rows and stuff like that. I'm just gonna do it right from here as it's empty. I'm gonna bring up my AI assistant and add a new command. Okay, I'm gonna ask for the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for a countdown timer. So I've asked for a bunch of details here. I wanna show the seconds counting down and then I wanna reveal a hidden section on success. So let's ask for that. And there we go. It looks like it's added the container for us. So let's see that on the front end. <laughs> okay, it's not what I'm expecting. Man, that's not a number. So let's take a gander at what's going on here. If I look at the section HTML, I'm probably not gonna see anything. What happens is the GPT adds the JavaScript outside of the section block, which is actually where I would want it. But it means I like to go to edit main HTML and see the whole page all at once. Ah, this is funny. The last time I did this, it gave me a date that was actually in 2023. Uh, so it looks like all we need to do is put in this code here. So not a number meant it's literally just this placeholder. We're gonna put in the format, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this to a few minutes from now and bring up the front end, hit refresh. And there we go, 16 minutes, 23 seconds. Let's see what happens when we make it successful. Okay, here we go, just a few seconds left to go. Three, two, one, and hooray, the event is starting now. Isn't that wonderful? Let's take a little closer look at the code. Again, I've had to view edit main HTML to see the whole pages code. And you can see in this if statement that is just simply getting the ID of countdown and it sets it to hide and it gets the element of celebration and it sets it to display block. So that celebration thing, it has an inline style of display none and that's getting changed. So, so this is just a great starting point. Okay, next we're gonna be a little bit more prescriptive. I'm going to ask for a very specific JavaScript library. I'm gonna ask for it to create a little confetti celebration thing. Uh, so I'm gonna ask for it to use Canvas Confetti or Party JS. I'm gonna give it the choice. We're asking for HTML, JavaScript, and CSS here. So let's go. So I'm gonna hit save, go back to the front end. Hello, it's me from the future. Allow me to interrupt myself to say, you don't have to go to the front end to see what's going on. That's just the habit. I'm an old school developer. In Live Canvas, you can hit Control P to get a redraw, which is incredibly helpful for JavaScript stuff. I'm gonna put a link in the description to all the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, let's get back to the video. <laughs> and, whoa! <laughs> so I'm pleasantly surprised that that's working. Um, I'm gonna show you the HTML here. So here's our section. And once again, we have the JavaScript happening right outside of it. So it's calling in a CDN version of Canvas Confetti and it's running all the code that we want for that. Previously, when I tried to do this, it actually used the CDN version that is currently a 404. So I manually did troubleshooting to change it to this version yesterday, but now it's doing it correctly. It's one of those things where if you ask a couple times, you'll get a different result. But I wanted to share that because it's the kind of troubleshooting you might face. So there we have it. The AI Assistant is an incredibly helpful tool. It's removing obstacles and it's making development easier and more efficient than ever. And now Live Canvas is better than ever too. Our AI assistant can do copywriting, it can do editing, it can make code, it can update sections, it can add animations and polish, it can create sections from scratch. And as I look at the usage here, everything that I've done in this video has cost one cent in tokens.
And this is just scratching the surface. We're just at the beginning of a new era of development. We can't wait to see what you do with your AI assistant.